In a continuation of my Accents of Westeros series, it's time to turn to Essos, starting with Bravos, that city of crime and high finance, and suspect brothels. Sirio Pharrell, the flamboyant dancing master that started Arya on her journey that would culminate in this pile of cringe, speaks with a very over-the-top accent that has its roots in the Mediterranean. Tomorrow you will catch it. Now pick it up. That is not the way, boy. It is not a great sword that is needing two hands to swing it. As he revealed in an interview, he based a lot of it on his father's Greek accent. Jack and Hagar, the shape-shifting stealth assassin with the 90s grunge hair, sounds quite German. These two, they have no courtesy. The men must ask forgiveness. You're called Ari. Tycho Nestoris is just Mark Gattis playing Mark Gattis, like he's done in pretty much every TV role since the League of Gentlemen. Welcome to the Iron Bank. Please. The Waif, that moody girl who gives Arya a hard time then turns into a T-1000, speaks with a standard TV posh accent. It will all be over soon. On your knees, or on your feet. The brothel madam that caters to Marin Trant's Jimmy Savile style perversions also speaks with an RP accent. Of course. Of course. Jesus show, you're in a completely foreign country to Westeros, are you really this bland when it comes to character voices? The Thin Man, the loan shark scammer that rips off sailors, speaks with a sort of cockney accent in an Albert Steptoe style way. Best in the city. You wouldn't lie to an old man, would you? The acting troupe that Arya watches perform plays in Bravos are an interesting bunch. Let's take a look at what each of them sound like, both in and out of character. It's all getting quite better, isn't it? Isambaro, played by none other than Richard E. Grant, speaks like a sort of aged Whitnail, the same posh anger and frustration wrapped up in a giant ego. You can do better, Bianca dear. You must do. I had two lines. There are no small parts. You rang very false. His portrayal of King Robert comes with a theatrical northern accent, much like the real one. Oh! Murdered by a boar! The great big hairy whore! Bobono the dwarf that plays Tyrion sounds much the same whether he's on stage or off. Well spoken southern English. He proclaims me hand of the king! The position's mine for life. And he's given me permission to take Sansa as my wife! <gasps> Certainly a lot better than Peter Dinklage's accent. Lady Crane sounds as posh as Cersei when she's playing the part, but in private it's a bit more rough around the edges and has traces of an Australian accent. I feel the winds of winter as they lick across the land, and our son alone on that cold, cold throne, without a guiding hand. You need to know that if we're going to be intimate. Of course we're going to be intimate. It's only a matter of time. Bianca, the murderous understudy with designs on the Cersei role, sounds equally well-spoken in RP, both in and out of the play. My father! Truly you should. Killing the man will do you no good. Save him, please! I rang very false. Clarenzo, who gives us an eye full of his warts, is exceedingly posh when playing Joffrey, but sounds much more estuary off stage. Good people, you may all relax. My father's friend shall be spared this. <laughs> it's a wart. Two and lastly, Camello, played by the underrated British comedy mainstay Kevin Eldon, has a hilarious turn playing Ned Stark with an exaggerated northern accent. I'd ask him for permission, but he smells too bloody awful! <laughs> Behind closed doors, he sounds well-spoken, if not completely RP. Well, don't worry, love. They usually go away in five or six years. Oh, watch this, darling. Oh. Stinks of me. You'd think with all the Italian sounding names the players had, you'd get at least one non-English accent, but nope. Ternicio Terris, the captain of the Titan's Daughter, the trading ship that takes Arya to Bravos, speaks with a sort of nondescript European accent. You're seeing him. I want to go north, to the wall. No, you don't. Hello, yes. In this ongoing series, I'm exploring the accents of characters in the HBO show Game of Thrones. Having previously covered Westeros, I've begun to take a look at Essos. 
This week it's Karth's turn in the spotlight. Since there are so few characters actually from Karth, I'll be covering everyone who happens to live there at the point it appears in the show. The first character we meet from Karth is the pompous Spice King, giving Danny a hard time. He speaks in a very sure of himself RP accent. I imagine they went with this choice as there is just something wonderfully condescending about a posh upper class voice sneering at Danny and telling her she can't come in. I am not a liar. Oh, I don't think you are. But as I've never met you before, my opinion on the matter is of limited value. Where I come from, guests are treated with respect, not insulted at the gates. Then perhaps you should return to where you come from. We wish you well. The Silk King doesn't get many lines, just one that I've found so far. He speaks in an English accent with a touch of the actor's native Croatian. I believe this was a local casting decision as the filming location of Calf was Lokrum, an island in Croatia. They're my children, I'm begging you. Begging us? It wasn't very long ago you were threatening us. Without me, the dragons will die. Pyat Pre, the warlock and kidnapper of dragons, is not someone you'd leave your kids with. He speaks in a creepy Edinburgh accent. I'm not sure as to why the showrunners decided to go with this, but it stands out enough to be unusual and adds a spooky quality to the character. On behalf of the warlocks of Karth, I welcome you. A demonstration. Should you grow tired of Saro's baubles and trinkets, it would be an honor to host you at the House of the Undying. Just a quick note to say that if you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing as it helps get them out there to more viewers. Thanks. Zaro Zoan Daxos, the self-proclaimed richest man in Karth and notable liar in that regard, speaks in a very upper-class RP accent. The character was originally from the Summer Isles, and though we don't have an exact fix on their accent in the show, we can assume he started off sounding quite different, before adopting a similar accent to the rest of the Thirteen, in order to fit in more. A conqueror. And how did you get all of this? Did someone give it to you? No. I come from nothing. I hit the docks like a piece of cargo. Except someone normally cares what happens to cargo. So you wanted more than you had, and you took it. This character, named only as Carthine Woman, speaks in an English accent with a trace of Croatia. Again, this is likely due to the show's decision to cast local actors. <laughs> and you must visit the night market. The Carthine night market. It's like no night market you've ever seen. It sounds wonderful. Mm. Lastly, we have Quaith, the enigmatic woman who looks and sounds like she could be a Dark Souls NPC. Quaith speaks in an RP accent with traces of a Germanic accent on her R's. A possible reason for this is that it adds to her mystique and otherworldliness. She needs true protectors, now more than ever. And when they see, they shall lust. For dragons are fire made flesh. Hello, yes. Today it's time to tackle the accents and language of those cheerful plunderers of every type of booty, the Dothraki. The Dothraki language was invented for the show by David J. Peterson of the Language Creation Society. He delivered over 1700 words to HBO before the show even began shooting talk about a swat. Now given that the Dothraki accent is a mixture of Spanish and Arabic, and that every Dothraki speaks in that way, it's probably best I get that out of the way early and just focus on each individual character and the tone they convey. Carl Drogo, the King Pony himself, has a low commanding primal tone, his words being more like grunts than anything articulate. Drogo doesn't need to speak much because his presence alone does all the talking, and when he does speak it's straight to the point, no unnecessary words. Anna, you Drogo. Anna Kotho is snappy and filled with venom. There's a constant sneer behind his voice, like he doesn't care what anyone thinks. He speaks quickly with a biting edge. Koholo has a gravelly and deep but quieter voice than Drogo. He sounds a little more controlled but still aggressive when needed. Oh. 
yours. I'm not. Mago speaks in a harsh, fast and fiery tone of voice. He is quick to snap, often raising his voice when getting heated, which is most of the time. Fuck. Youthful but firm, Ricaro speaks with energy and enthusiasm, though there's a seriousness to his tone when things get intense. Brash and eager, with a slightly playful edge, Cavaro's voice has a bit more personality. Cavaro says that Malacca is an idiot. They can pry out the gems, the rest is pure gold. Very soft. He can chop off as much as we can carry. Iri sounds soft and respectful. She speaks with care, her tone always gentle, especially around Daenerys. <laughs> Moon is no egg. Moon is goddess, wife of sun. It is known. It is known. Doria's voice is seductive just like she was trained to sound. She has an undertone that suggests she's always in control of the conversation. Daria is very calculating though, as we discover, and she uses her charm and wit to those ends. Yes, seeing a dragon would make me very happy. Well, after 15 years in a pleasure house, I imagine just seeing the sky makes you happy. Assertive, but not overbearing, Kono's voice has a sharp edge to it, especially when he's in battle mode but he can also be surprisingly respectful when the situation calls for it. <laughs> Commanding and filled with confidence, Moro's voice is full of swagger with a mocking tone that suggests he's already won any argument before it started. <laughs> Ralko's voice doesn't need to be loud to be intimidating. There's a sense of menace behind every word. Forzo and Brojo have matching tones of cruelty and playfulness. They speak with a mocking edge, often finishing each other's sentences like one of those annoying couples you get stuck with on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> the Dothraki crone has a cracked, slow voice that's full of wisdom and age. The high priestess's voice carries a spiritual quality as if pulling from a higher power. She speaks in a hypnotic rhythm. Asilaki Yankasores, Chiorias, Zin Hajaki, Jinak, Lazari, Halerge, Versa Vaisish, Triserek. Ego has a raspy, worn down accent like he spent too long riding and drinking. Ago is very deliberate and to the point. No time for bullshit. Ajin le sosh. Hashafka la zidre kisharaka anaka. Finier shijari. Hello and... <laughs> well, we've reached the end of Game of Accents, but have no fear, there are plenty of other fantasy shows, films and games, so I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Hopefully. This week it's time to round up the remaining Essos characters and grill their accents like Drogod grilling a fat boy's family. <laughs> Melisandre hails from a shy, like Quaith, and also has a mysterious accent that's hard to place. There's a touch of the actress's native Dutch in there, and it was no doubt chosen for its distinctiveness in comparison to the other characters in the show standing out particularly in Westeros, where everyone either sounds Northern, Southern, or New Jersey, and... My time whispering in the ears of kings has come to an end. Varys hails from Lys, but has spent so long at court in King's Landing that his accent is now RP. He speaks in an obsequious, fawning way, which is designed to make him seem trustworthy and of little threat. I have a new for accents. I've lost my accent entirely. I have an ear for that as well. <laughs> Salador San, another Lassini, 
speaks in a sort of French colonial accent. He sounds like you'd expect a flamboyant pirate to sound with his careless arrogance. Cersei, I want him. I'll sail with your fleet, all 30 of my ships. Illyrio Mapatis, despite hailing from Pentos, speaks in a rich upper-class RP accent in yet another missed opportunity for the show. I guess they went with that to show that he's a rich, powerful figure or something. Soon you will cross the narrow sea and take back your father's throne. People drink secret toast to your health. Shay, the Foani Hor, is from Lurath, in the show at least. She speaks in a sort of German accent, much like Jack and Hagar, another Lurathi. What's this? Accent consistency in my fantasy show? Wonders will never cease. I stopped being a child when I was nine. My mother made sure of that. Talisa Magia, the show only character, is from Volantis, where apparently they speak in RP accents. That boy did. The family he fights for. Do you think he's friends with King Joffrey? Kinvara, the absolute head honcho of the Lord of Light's religion, and a complete wasted plotline, speaks in a slightly Israeli accent. Again, this was probably a decision to make us stand out. You don't need to persuade me. I came to help. Daenerys Stormborn is the one who was promised. Missandei hails from the Summer Isles or thereabouts, but speaks the common tongue in a very well-spoken accent. This is presumably because she acts as an interpreter and has learnt many languages, if not all of them. I have tried wine before. It made me feel funny. Grey Worm has a sort of generic foreign accent, somewhat like the rest of the Unsullied. You'd think they'd all sound quite high-pitched. Unsullied never drink. Why not? Rules. Miri Mazdur, the witch who curses Daenerys, is Lazarine which is that area that borders the Dothraki Sea and acts as a sort of basic food resource for them. She speaks in a similar accent to the Dothraki, unsurprisingly. An innocent. He would have been the stallion who mounts the world. Vala, the Miranese prostitute who sets up an unsullied for ambush and is then scared half to death by Varys, speaks in an oddly estuary accent. If I tell you anything, they'll kill me. So either you kill me or they do. Forrest of Mir, whose nationality is literally in his name, nevertheless speaks in a standard Westeros Southern accent. I suppose he could have been there a long time. We know he fought in the Greyjoy Rebellion. Come on. Maybe they got some AR hidden away. Krasnis Mo Naklos, the slave master who supplies the Unsullied to Danny, speaks Low Valerian in what I presume is a Low Valerian accent. It sounds suitably exotic with a touch of Egyptian. His Dar Zo Lorak, the hapless former slaver turned arranged husband to Daenerys, sounds very RP and proper. Perhaps he only speaks that way when he's speaking Westerosi. I've spent much of my life in this arena, and in my experience, larger men do triumph over smaller men. Ario, who gets one good line in the whole show, speaks in a standard estuary accent despite living in Dawn for years and hailing from Norval. When you were whole, it would have been a good fight. The wine cellar, who completely screws up poisoning Danny, then has to run along behind a horse with his cock and balls out, speaks in a nervous estuary accent with some touches of somewhere else. It would be a crime to drink a wine this rich without at least giving it time to breathe. Do as he says. Razdal Mo Uraz, the Yunkai slave trader who craps himself when he sees Daddy's dragons, has a well-spoken accent with the faintest hint of Middle Eastern. Our empire was old before dragons stirred in old Valyria. Prendal Ne Gezin, one of the Second Sun captains, gets about one line and speaks it with a sort of Eastern European accent. Our contract is our bond. If we break our bond, no one will hire the second sons again. His co-captain Miro has a sort of cockney accent verging on well-spoken. Not sure where he's supposed to be from, so I guess we could let that slide. You're the mother of dragons. I swear I fucked you once in a pleasure house in Leeds. Mind your tongue. And lastly, Dario Naharis, the first one, speaks the same way as Miro. I hope the old man is better with a sword than he is with a lie. You have 8,000 unsullied. After he went off to be in Deadpool, 
His replacement is a bit more well-spoken, though to me he sounds sort of like Jamie. The pile of angry muscles never had any muscles here. Or... Here. And that about wraps it up for Game of Thrones. Bye then.